Call the meeting to order for the Wicomico County Council Legislative Session 2022-24 for November 15th, 2022. Those that like to stand and join us in the Lord Prayer and Pledge of Allegiance, please do. Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Today we remember his trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Good morning. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion or corrections? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motions carry. The consent agenda has been approved unanimously. Uh, recognizing that uh, Vice President Ernie Davis is not here today. Good morning, Ms. Hurley. Oh, excuse me. Uh, before we go to Ms. Hurley, we do have a proclamation for American Education Week. Uh, Councilman Dobb will be reading the proclamation, and uh, Dr. Stauffer, I believe he will be receiving it. Well, uh, you are Board of Education, aren't you? So uh, this proclamation is for American Education Week. Um, during American Education Week, it was always an exciting time for me because my twins were in school, and every year I went to uh, their classrooms until um, they got in high school at Parkside. Then they didn't want me to come anymore for some reason. So. But I still showed up and they ignored me. <laughs> so uh, proclamation uh, for American Education Week. Whereas public schools are the backbone of our democracy, providing young people with the tools they need to maintain our precious values of freedom, civility, and equality. And whereas by equipping our youth with both practical skills and broader intellectual abilities, schools give them hope and access to a productive future. And whereas all education employees work tire tirelessly to serve our children and communities with care and professionalism and work together to provide a safe and healthy learning environment for students. Now, therefore, the Atkin County Executive and the Wicomico County Council hereby proclaim November 13th through the 19th as American Education Week. And we encourage all citizens to express gratitude for the educators and staff in our schools. Done this 15th day of November, signed by the Acton County Executive and the County Council, except Mr. Davis, so we'll get him to sign it and get this to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Dodd. I just want to also recognize that we have our board chair, Mr. Malone, here. And on behalf of the board and Wicomico County Public Schools, it's a pleasure to accept this proclamation this morning. Uh, when I first uh, stepped into the superintendent position, I challenged my staff as well as the schools and principals to really make this year about uh, an American education year. We recognized how important it is for our parents to be involved in our school system and our community members. So it's a pleasure to have this recognition this morning. So thank you to the council and also to our entire community who supports us. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Gentlemen. Good morning, Ms. Hurley. Good morning, Mr. President, council members, ladies and gentlemen. The first item on the agenda this morning is a public hearing on resolution number 153-2022. This is to amend the fiscal year 2023 operating and capital budget and fiscal year 2023-2027 capital improvement plan to approve funding for the purpose of property located at 7341 Parsonsburg Road in Parsonsburg, Maryland for the relocation of the Pittsville Library 
in the amount of $395,000. Um, a public hearing notice was um, posted on the county's website and published in the local newspaper. And we do have Pam Olin here, Director of Finance, and Mr. Seth Hirschberger, Director of the Wacomico Public Libraries. Thank you, Ms. Hurley. At, thus, at this time, we open the floor for public hearing on resolution number 153-2022. If you have any comments that you'd like to make, come to the podium, please. State your name, your county of residence, and your concerns. Public hearing on resolution number 153-2022. Entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 153-2022. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. Yes, Joe. Well, I want to um, commend the... Um, library board and the director for the work they've done i know it's been a long road um, we've looked for or they have looked for um, property on the east side for a long time i think this is a good choice um, i hope everything works out um, the people of the east side have been looking forward to an expanded library services for a long time so um, i see them in the audience and i want to thank you okay yeah, I, I want to commend, commend the staff also. Um, I think it's a perfect location. Um, may not be directly in the middle of Pittsville, but it's a beautiful location and it looks like a library. So it'll fit well. Director Hirschberg, you did a good job. Uh, here, I know they interviewed you. I guess it was yesterday. It was on the news last night. Did a good job representing the library in the county. So. Any other comments, questions? All those in favor of resolution 153-2022 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried, resolution passes. Thank you very much. Next is a public hearing on resolution number 154-2022. This is to amend the fiscal year 2023 operating and capital budget and fiscal year 2023-2027 capital improvement plan to transfer 62,000 from contingency to the airport water main extension project. And again, we had a public hearing notice post posted on the county's website and published in the local newspaper. And Mr. Mark Whitelock here, Deputy Director of Public Works, um, is here if there are any questions. So we open the floor for public hearing on resolution number 154, 2022. Have any comments that you'd like to make, come to the podium, please. State your name, your county of residence, and your concerns. And that concludes the public hearing for resolution 154, 2022. Entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 154, 2022. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of resolution 154-2022 say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Resolution passes. Next for your consideration is resolution number 155-2022. This is approving and publishing the dates of official holidays for county employees for 2023. Okay. a motion from council to approve resolution 155-2022. Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor of resolution 155-2022 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <laughs> resolution passes. Okay, the next item for business is resolution number 156 2022, declaring that Westwood Acquisition Partners LLC is eligible to receive Maryland State Enterprise Zone benefits for property located at 1865 West Road in Salt Spring, Maryland. Um, we've had a few of these enterprise zone applications before you, but as a reminder, in order for a business to qualify for enterprise zone benefits, it must meet one of the two specific statutory requirements, which are that the business must either make an investment in capital improvements of more than 50,000 or hire new employees since it's been located in the zone. And Westwood Acquisition Partners LLC is eligible for the enterprise zone benefits because of their investment in more than 50,000 in the property. And we do have um, Laura Soper here, Enterprise Zone Coordinator, if you have any questions. Entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 156, 2022. Move. Second. 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 Any discussion or questions? Seeing none. All those in favor of resolution 156, 2022 say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Resolution passes. Thank you, Ms. Soper. Next is resolution number 158-2022. This is amending the fiscal year 2023 budget position control document um, exhibit F and making a supplemental appropriation from contingency for the Department of Elections. And we have um, Pam Olin here, Director of Finance, and Dion Church, Director of the Wacomico County Board of Elections. Motion from Council to approve resolution 158 2022. 
Second. 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 Uh, discussion. Uh, Ms. Olin, if you could, um, if you if you don't mind, and Ms. Church as well, just so the public understands um, exactly what we're proposing here and how everything's going with the Board of Elections currently. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so let everybody know. We, who you are. I, uh, Pam Olin, Finance Director. Good morning, Dion Church, Director of Elections. So with the transition in election directors, um, some information inadvertently got left off the budget with the, uh, I did not know about some of the raises given to state employees. So um, with that, uh, when Dion came on, um, she looked at the stuff, but she was also in the midst of doing a primary election and getting ready for a general election. So they had sufficient funds to pay their, their salaries as required, um, but uh, we needed to get the documents and paperwork up to date and make sure that there's sufficient funds for the remainder of the year. And thus, this cleans up all of those um, items that um, were not caught in the original um, submission. Questions for money? What is the um, what is FICA? That's uh, that is Social Security FICA. Okay. So uh, that's seven point six five percent of um, salaries. salaries as paid. Well, I know there was. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, the last Board of Elections meeting that I went to, there were some questions about um, the county is paying the salary for your staff and the election judges, but who's responsible for the hiring process? And I was just wondering if you ever got that um, worked out. For the full-time employees, they're hired through the state. Okay. Our part-time employees and our election judges are hired through the county, but our judges are actually temporary employees. Okay. And so they fall under the same human resource criteria as our temporary employees. Yeah, this has kind of a funky um, so the full-time employees are state employees, but they're listed on our budget because we pay dollar for dollar the amount to the state, and we pay it as a salary number, even though they're hired as state employees. The rest of them are county employees that are hired through our hiring process and get checks. So um, the full-time employees get checks from the state. We pay the state for those full-time employees. Okay, so they go through the regular hiring process in Wicomico County as far as background checks. As for the state, on the, on the part-time side. And the election judges. Yes. The judges are temporary employees, so we just, we hire them in. They're outside of hiring practices for Wicomico in the state. They just follow our temporary policy of hiring judges. Our judges are hired under our election law. So they don't fall under the same human resource that. But they get paid through us on that. Hmm. Okay. That might be help resolve some of the questions that they had there at the election meeting. Okay. Thank you. Stretch any uh, any anomalies on this last uh, election cycle that you found? Um, no, so far everything is going well. Um, we are scheduled to have our provisional canvas on tomorrow and our final canvas will be on Friday. We may work a little on Thursday, but we are scheduled to certify on time. Ms. Church, I want to thank you and uh, the staff at the Board of Elections for the last two elections um, and previous elections. It seemed like everything went uh, well and went smooth, and it was nice seeing you stop by and do some hands-on stuff. So thank you, and it, I know it's a lot of work during the election cycle. Thank you. Discussion. All those in favor of Resolution 158-2022 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry. Resolution passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Mr. President, that's all I have. Thank you, Mrs. Hurley. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Hitchens. Good morning. Uh, I call your attention to Resolution 159-2022, accepting the miscellaneous expenditures audit report. And a motion from Council for Resolution 159-2022. So moved. Second. Second? Second. Discussion? Uh, I have a quick presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, the objectives of the audit were to analyze the county's operating expenses to determine appropriate categories for evaluation and to evaluate expenses from selected categories for appropriate expense coding. I selected 10 categories to evaluate from fiscal year 2022. 
Those were office supplies, postage, furniture less than 5000 advertising, printing, professional fees, vehicle expenses, fuel, meeting and seminars, hotel fees, telephones and cell phones, and hand tools. I also evaluated a random sampling of receipts from Staples, Sam's Club, and Amazon as those vendors sell a large variety of items. There were three findings in this audit report. The first is local meals. I recommend the county adopt a policy for local meals to include appropriate circumstances and monetary guidelines. Uh, the second was miscoding of operational expenses. The county does not utilize a budget line item for miscellaneous expenses. Within the sample of transactions, items like work apparel, holiday greeting cards, retirement plaques and cakes, funeral arrangements, and professional day lunch supplies were coded under office supplies. The finding doesn't conclude whether those types of purchases are appropriate, but rather that they, that they do not fit into the office supplies category. I would recommend the county establish guidelines for all departments to follow for uniformity, transparency, and proper coding. One suggestion might be to have a relatively small miscellaneous line item available per department to cover these types of expenses. Lastly, there were two transactions that should have been in, capital ex in a capital expense line item, not operational. Capital expenses differ from operational expenses because they should be recorded as an asset and depreciated over time. I recommend management to continue strengthening the process and controls to assure that capital expenses are coded for proper accounting. Based on my testing, I've rated the current system as adequate, which would indicate it is medium risk. And I would also like to thank all the departments that worked with me during the course of this audit. And I can answer any questions if council has any. Let uh, me just one real quick question uh, regarding that last item you just talked about, about the capital expense versus operating expense. Is there a certain lifespan of the equipment that designates it as capital, capital versus operating? Uh, the county goes by a threshold of 5000 So if an item is over $5,000, that's when we capitalize it. So it's not the lifespan of something, it's the... the Correct. The, each... Um, type of asset would have its own lifespan. Some are three, it usually ranges from three to 10 years on uh, typically. I, I was glad to see that you did get a letter in response from uh, Pam Olin, Director of Finance. Yeah, Pam and Charles have been really fantastic at uh, responding to the audits with what their plans are going forward to address the findings. How do you follow up on that? Let's say in six months, do you contact them or is there any? Uh, with, with this particular audit, um, it, it very well may and just be, end up being another audit next year. I don't intend to do a follow-up this year on it. Yes, Josh. Uh, just one quick question. You said we are at a adequate or medium, I guess, risk. If we, assuming we take care of these things, is that, what's the next level up? Satisfactory is the highest okay. level. Um, but yeah, it's uh, adequate. I, I did, you know I did that. Um, a lot of it had to do probably with the capital expenses slipping through um, because that process is very manual. Munis doesn't give us any sort of automation to catch those capital expenses. Great. All, right, thank you. All those in favor, of resolution one fifty nine two thousand twenty two, say aye. 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 Post. Motion's carried. Resolution passes. Uh, next, I call your attention to resolution. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me put it up there first. Sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. No, I, I should have taken the lead there. Uh, entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 160 2022. I move. Second. Right. Second. Thank you, Mr. I'm ready to go. Yes. <laughs> uh, I call your attention to resolution 160 2022, accepting the inmate welfare account audit report. Do the motions? Oh, yep. Yeah. I'm not paying attention. I may have had it backwards part. too. I'm not really sure. <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's been a long meeting. You'll, you'll, you'll get this figured out eventually. <laughs> <laughs> the objectives of the audit were to gain an understanding of how purchases from the welfare account are proposed, assess internal controls and accountability of bank accounts and funds, and ensure the funds are being spent in a manner that is appropriate and to the benefit of the inmate population. The inmate welfare account is a non-taxpayer funded account that provides for the well-being of inmates beyond what is required by law. It is funded through commissions for optional services that inmates pay for, such as payphones and commissary. Some goods and services that the DOC provided with the inmate welfare account were law materials, legal consulting services, recreational goods, and holiday gifts. 
In fiscal year 2022, the inmate welfare account had deposits of about 274,000 and purchases of 267,000. The bank account is administered by the DOC accounting department with all purchases being authorized by the warden. The account is tracked with QuickBooks and monthly reconciliations are provided to the county finance department for oversight. There was one finding in this report that has to do with the county purchasing rules. There were a handful of purchases that would have met the threshold for needing to follow more stringent purchasing guidelines. Because the county is the fiduciary for the account, it should be following the county policies for procurement to assure due diligence and best practices for all purchases. Based on my testing, I have rated the current system as satisfactory, which would indicate it as low risk. And I would like to thank the staff from the Department of Corrections for their participation. And I can answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions? <clears throat> The only thing I would say in, in this in this um, um, study, the, the audit that you did, there were no management comments. Did you receive any management comments? Uh, I did receive a, like an informal, like Ruth and I spoke informally. They didn't submit an official statement, so I didn't include it. But they said they would look into um, what other Department of Corrections are doing with this program. And I guess there will just be a basic follow-up on your part later. Yeah, with this, um, honestly, e even with the purchasing rules, it only fell for a handful of transactions, and most likely they would piggyback on other things. Like when they bought law materials, for instance, they should have quoted that. Most likely there's a state contract for something very much like that because it's probably not many vendors that are providing law materials for prisons. All those in favor of Resolution 120. 160 2022 say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motions carried. Resolution passes. Thank you, Mr. Hitchens. Have, thank you. This time we open the floor for public comments. If anyone would have, like to make any public comments, come to the podium, please state your name, your uh, county of residence, and your concern. Good morning, everyone. My name is Audrey Orr. I'm a um, board of trustees for Wacomico uh, Public Libraries, currently serving as chair. I just, uh, two quick comments. Um, first of all, um, as a member of the board, I just want to assure you that everyone on the board has, is very enthusiastic um, and very excited about our support for the new project, the new uh, facility in, uh, the, on the east side of Salisbury is unanimous. Um, we're delighted and obviously delighted that Seth found the property. Uh, and secondly, I want to thank Ms. Oland, um, Mr. Pesoda, and this council for all the support and work you've done in uh, helping us get this project through. Then as a private citizen, taking off my uh, library hat for my board hat for just a minute, and also as a citizen who pays not only city of Salisbury taxes, but also Wicomico County taxes, have that pleasure. Um, I truly appreciate, and it's very obvious, the hard work and strong consideration this council puts into every considering every expense. Um, that, again, I, I just want to express that appreciation and that thanks. Secondly, again, as a private citizen of the county, I would encourage this council to continue to focus or be aware of the value the library brings to the county, not just for our current residents, but also as an appeal for newcomers uh, and the property taxes those newcomers will bring to us. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, sir. Any other public comments? All right, that concludes public comments. Council comments. Really good. Okay. Um, presidential comments. I'd only like to, to say I'm, I'm glad we're moving forward with this uh, project for the library. Uh, uh, Director Hirschberg, you're doing an excellent job in representing the library, and we really appreciate it. So, Ms. where you are as well, as far as Board of Directors is concerned, Board of Trustees, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, I know Councilwoman Ackley and I were in Sharptown. Was it this weekend or was it last weekend? This weekend. It was this weekend uh, with a kiosk in Sharptown, which is great. So expanding the library in every, way, every way imaginable. So congratulations on, on your work. And I'm sure the council looks forward to supporting you throughout the next year as well. Uh, that being said, entertain a motion to adjourn from the council. That move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Adjourn. Thank you all for coming.